Please welcome to the stage the winner of the 2023 World Child Most Inspirational Child, age four to six, Violet Seymour. Yep, nailed it. You've still got it, Has. So, Prince Harry did a little speech at the Well Child Award Ceremony yesterday, and it was as glorious as you might expect. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank everyone? He's reading the instructions. No, he's not. He said thank you, everyone. It's just he doesn't really enunciate very well, which is understandable. How many of us feel battered? I'm delighted to be here this evening to present this award to our youngest winner. Now, there are moments from Harry's speech yesterday which are hilarious, and we're getting to them. But I'm just going to say one thing. Please stop the hatred towards Harry. And I'm saying this for completely selfish reasons. We don't want another Meghan Markle situation on our hands where she goes into hiding. No more archetypes! You maniac! No more TIG, no more speeches at award ceremonies. I hope you're happy with yourselves. Meghan and Harry were the greatest comedy double act since uh, Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. In fact, they were very similar to Don Quixote and Sancho Panza. Meghan is the Don Quixote, delusional, ambitious, lots of flowery language which you're not really sure if it means anything, leading the charge at the windmills that she believes to be uh, unconscious bias or something. And Harry is her Sancho Panza. He comes along for the ride, he's tilting at windmills as well, but he's not really sure why. He just trusts Megan, Don Quixote. He just hopes that all of the world is wrong, and in fact, uh, Don Quixote, Megan, is not insane, and uh, they eventually will defeat all of their enemies after all the batterings, and uh, he will become the governor of his island, as she promised him. Please welcome to the stage the winner of the 2023 World Child Most Inspirational Child, age four to six, Violet Seymour. Oh, hooray for young Violet. You know, it's every little boy and girl's dream come true to win the... Um, 2023 World Child Most Inspirational Child, age four to six. I like the way Harry looked away from the autocue when he was halfway through the calendar year. He said 2023. <laughs> the stage, the winner of the 2023 World Child Most Inspirational Child, age four to six. Can't even ad lib the year. <laughs> no wonder he needs two autocues. But anyway, yeah, just getting nominated for the World Child Most Inspirational Child Award, age four to six, is an honour, so... Ah, oh, look at little Violet, cute as a button. Now back to Prince Harry. Well, child patron Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, would like to say a few words. I'm sure he would. Try not to get choked up this year. It's always you, it's your fault. Now that could be a charming encounter. That really could be a, a funny way to start your speech. Just doesn't carry himself right. The confidence is gone. If he comes up and says, oh, I'll try not to get choked up this year, it's your fault. But instead, he comes up, oh, try not to get choked up. And the host's view of Harry as he turns round. Terrifying. It's your fault. One person nervously laughing in the crowd. So anyway, then Harry starts his speech, and it's the usual typical uh, flowery, meaningless, inane language uh, delivered in a monotonous drone. Your collective stories of strength, compassion, and perseverance are inspiring to not only those in this room, but to many far and wide. Now notice that he's trying to give the appearance that he's scanning the room and he's looking around, uh, but he's not. He's just looking from one autocue to the other. That's all he's doing. He hasn't memorised any of this. He's delivered very unenthusiastically. <laughs> he's doing this because it's the only gig he's got. You have set the bar and you've raised it time and time again. And I am so humbled to stand before you as I strive to convey your impact in words. Oh, he's striving, all right. The strive is real, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure he's conveying any impact. Oof, impactful. He's sending shockwaves through the room. Makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. So I strive to convey your impact with words. And here's possibly the most controversial bit of the speech, if you will. Will you? So I, d I don't think it's you know, anything to get offended about. It's just very strange, like everything he does. I think he's just, he's just simple. He's just Sancho Panza, right? Uh, okay, he's doing some daft stuff, but he doesn't really know why he's doing it. So don't, you know, be kind. As you know, I was unable to attend the awards last year as my grandmother passed away. As you also probably know, she would have been the first person to insist 
that I still come to be with you all instead of going to her. <clears throat> now I can hear some of you uh, keyboard warriors. How dare you call her your grandmother? She's the queen, right? Um, yeah, okay, but you're all a bit ooh, cuckoo, right? You're like Will Smith. Uh, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth, right? That's what you sound like to me. You've lost your mind. Don't make Prince Harry your Chris Rock. And I think more importantly, if you're getting angry about that clip, you're missing out on how hilarious it is. He delivered it like a joke. As you know, I was unable to attend the awards last year as my grandmother passed away. As you also probably know, she would have been the first person to insist that I still come to be with you all instead of going to her. <clears throat> As you know, I couldn't make it last year. My grandmother died. But I think we all know that she would have wanted me to be here, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's precisely why I know exactly one year on that she is looking down on all of us tonight. Happy we're together, continuing to spotlight such an incredible community. <laughs> Anyway, uh, his speech was shit, uh, but now we get to the best bit, the wrapping up of uh, Harry's, Harry's contribution. A huge thank you to the Duke of Sussex for his support of Wellchild on this special evening and of course throughout the year. Now what I'd like to do is, he's going to stay on stage, we have a reason because we would like uh, all of our children and young people, all the winners, to return to the stage, please, to have some photographs taken. And his face says it all, really. Oh, fuck, I'd forgotten about this bit. <laughs> I could never do this. I would never find myself in a situation like this. So uh, I guess hats off to him for even being there. But this, to me, the ending of this ceremony, the ending of Harry's speech here is, is the most awkward thing ever when he has to interact with the kids on stage. It's like, <laughs> and it just doesn't end. So could you, all the young people who have won... Come and join us on stage. Dinner will be served in just a moment, as soon as the winners are back in their seats. And uh, after dinner, you'll hear about this year's Parent Carer and Second Special Recognition Award winner, and also Sophie Ellis Bexter will be performing. God, as Alan Partridge, yes. Oh, and also uh, Sophie Ellis Bexter will be playing, I think, or something. How has Sophie Ellis Bexter fallen so low? <laughs> Talk about murder on the dance floor. I'd be murdering someone. Now, to anyone who has any amount of social anxiety, uh, you'll know that this is just like an awful situation. Loads of people watching you. Loads of unfortunate little kids who you've got to take a photo with. And that elevator music that just gets louder and louder. I would be sweating balls. Man, maybe this is just me, but in that situation, I'd just do a, I'd just do a Joe Biden, just walk straight out, straight through all the tables. Everyone's like, "Where are you going?" Yeah, see ya. <laughs> I would have no hesitation. I'd just be, I'd be, uh, I'd be choking. I'd be like, "No, no, no! I need to get out of here, one way or another." I'm getting nervous just thinking about being in a situation like that. Fuck. <laughs> Trending to know what to say to them. God, oh, like pointing, gesticulating, and everything, so that everyone thinks you're, you know, that you're in control of the situation. I'm fine. I'm Prince Harry. I can deal with this kind of thing. I'm a man of the people. Fucking hell, I'm not. <laughs> Oh, thank God it's over. Oh, 
That is such a relief, I can't believe, I thought it would never end. I'd get out of here as fast as I could if I were you. They never shut the fuck up. Oh, Harry's got an admirer. I just wanted to see Harry. I think you're lovely. I think this is where Harry and Meghan saw themselves three years ago when they left the royal family. I mean, they got all these deals with Netflix and Spotify and Penguin and everything. And yet, they're still standing around at these ribbon-cutting, speech-giving events. Uh, no one's paying attention to them. <laughs> it's like... I just... I don't think that that was uh, the, 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 the dream, you know, uh, when they started tilting at the windmill. I, I think uh, I think Kyoto thought that they were... Uh, I, I don't know, that she was going to be the next Joe Rogan and her husband was going to be, uh, I don't know, really. But he'd have an island to be the governor of. Oh, what has Meghan done to this man? He is a shell of the <laughs> shadow of the Jack the Lad he once was. What is that hug? You don't hug anyone, but especially a woman like that, you know. Oh, I couldn't have... I couldn't possibly, I wouldn't even dream of it. Oh. Sim! <laughs> and then they just leave him to his own devices to wander off into the dark crowd. He doesn't have a place. Oh, no, not that way. <laughs> oh, poor Harry. Poor Harry. Poor Harry, a drink. Um, all right, uh, that's enough for uh, today's episode. I think you've had enough hilarity for one day. Like, share, subscribe, all the things that help. The algorithm, please hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.